Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and this lesson is about mutually exclusive events, or in other words, events that cannot happen at the same time. We're going to be talking about the probability of different events happening at, at the same time, basically. So just some things that are good to know when we're working with probability. There are typically about three or four different types of questions that they ask. They ask about a die. They often call this a number cube a number cube or dice. Dice is just the plural of die, so if you're asked for one die or two dice. Um, but a number cube is often replacing that language. So if you're used to the word die and you hear number cube, it means the same thing. It's a six-sided cube that has the numbers one through six, either represented with numbers or with dots. Also, a coin is just a thin <laughs> cylinder with two sides, typically heads and a tail. So usually you have a 50-50 shot. 50% one, 50% the other. And the most complicated questions come from a deck of cards. So a deck of cards, I tried to lay it out here for you. Um, if you're familiar with a deck of cards, you can skip forward a little bit. But it'll have 52 cards in the deck. There are four suits, spades, which are represented by this. They're black. Clubs are also black. Hearts are red and diamonds are red. For each suit, there are 13 cards, an ace, which is sometimes represented as a one, but it's you know up at the top because it's usually interchangeable. But an ace would be an A, king, queen, jack, and then the numbers two through ten. Um, there are 26 colors uh, or cards of each color, so 26 black, 26 red, and then 13 cards in each suit. Those are just some common numbers that you'll see and that you want to be somewhat familiar with. So let's talk now, now that we have some basic background, let's talk about mutually exclusive events. Music, mutually exclusive event, events are usually designated with the word or. For an example, if you have four blue shirts and three green shirts, you can get blue or green. So there are two events you can't do at the same time. You can't reach into your drawer and pull out both a blue and a green shirt. You would get one or the other. Um, there are events that cannot happen at the same time. Here are some examples using those probability um, things that we talked about earlier. Flipping a coin and getting heads and tails. Drawing a card from a deck, getting a red and a spade. You can't do that at the same time. Rolling a die, getting a three and an even number. You can't do that at the same time. So here are three examples of things that you can't do at the same time. So you would either have to get heads or tails. You would either have to get a red card or a spade. You would have to get a three or an even number. You can't have them at the same time. They'd be designated using the word or. Those are examples of mutually exclusive events. So now it's your job to identify which of these on the list here are mutually exclusive events. I've also given you the fourth common um, thing that we use when we're talking about probability, and that is our spinner. Um, typically, you'd spin this around and it would land on one of these spots. So I have eight different spaces on the spinner, and they're numbered, and they're also in different colors. So go ahead and pause the recording. Try and identify which things are mutually exclusive events, events that can't happen at exactly the same time. All right, we're back. Spinning a blue color and a five. You can't spin a blue and the number five at the same time. So those are mutually exclusive events. You can't do both at the same time. Spinning an even number and a green, you could spin the even number two and a green at the same time. Therefore, they are not mutually exclusive events. These are events that could happen at the same time. Spinning a yellow and a green, you can't do that at the same time. And spinning an even number and a red. The probability of spinning a red is zero. It's still you know, an event, but the probability would be zero. And you can't spin an even number and a red because there's no you know, at the same time because they don't really work. You can't spin a red at all. Um, anyway, so that one's sort of a weird one because there are no red numbers. 
quick review on probability and then we're going to start calculating the probability of mutually exclusive events. The probability is the positive outcomes or the favorable outcomes or the, the outcomes you're looking for over the total possible outcomes. We write it as a fraction, positive outcomes on top, total possible outcomes at the bottom. Now let's look at actually calculating a little bit using our mutually exclusive events. For mutually exclusive events, you just add up the probabilities. So the, probabl the probability of A happening or B happening, you just add them up. Probability of A plus probability of B will give you the probability of one or the other happening. So it makes sense when we do a question together. Here's our example. If you spin the wheel one time, what is the probability that you will spin blue or green? So what we need to do is we need to add up the probability of blue plus the probability of green. So let's look. What is the probability of blue? Blue is three possible spaces out of a total of eight. So the probability of getting blue is three out of eight. That's our probability of spinning blue. The probability of spinning green is the same because there are three green spaces out of a total of eight. To calculate the probability of spinning blue or green, we just add these up. So we add three eighths plus three eighths, which gives us six eighths. One challenge with probability is that you need to reduce your fractions to lowest terms. So if you need a review on how to do that, you need to quickly do that. But basically what you're doing is reducing this fraction to lowest terms, which would give you three quarters, or three out of four. The probability of, of spinning a blue or a green is three quarters. Let's look at some other events using our deck of cards. A card is drawn from a standard deck. Standard deck is just the deck of cards that we talked about. You'll hear it referred to as a standard deck. What is the probability of drawing a red card, the ten of spades, or a black five? So to do a quick review, I've brought back our picture of the um, standard deck of cards. And I'm going to look at that and I'm going to look for these three things. The probability of getting a red. Red includes all the hearts and all the diamonds. Oops, diamonds is on two lines there. There are a total of 26 diamonds and hearts, red cards. So 26 out of 52. Notice I'm leaving that the way it is. I don't reduce it down to one half because that will make adding the fractions harder later on. Keep the denominator the same. Okay, so red is 26 out of 52. The 10 of spades, that's one out of 52. And how many black fives are there? Two. So that would be two out of 52. So there is the probability of these three events. A red, 26 out of 52. Ten of spades would be a one out of 52. And a black five would be two out of 52. I'm going to get rid of this table so that I have a little bit more room. But I'm going to keep those probabilities. To calculate, I add them together. 26 out of 52 plus 1 out of 52 plus 2 out of 52 gives me a total of 29 out of 52. This fraction is in lowest terms, so that is my final answer for that probability. The last question we're going to do is using a number cube. What is the a number cube is rolled once? Find the probability of rolling a 2 or an odd number. And so I'm going to calculate both of those. Probability of rolling a 2 is 1 out of 6. 1 out of the 6 options on the number cube is a 2. The probability of rolling an odd number is 3 out of 6. The odd numbers are 1, 3, and 5. So there are 3 odd numbers. Just add those together. 1 out of 6 plus 3 out of 6 gives me 4 out of 6. And I reduce my fraction to lowest terms, giving me 2 out of 3. So the probability of rolling a 2 or an odd number is 2 out of 3 or 2 thirds. So that's the basics of mutually exclusive events. Remember that they are events that cannot happen at the same time. And you calculate them by adding the probability of both events together. Hope that was helpful for you and have a wonderful day.